That night, Monica could not sleep. She kept thinking about Ben and what she had seen. In the town of Koto, there lived a hard-working man named Ben. He was handsome and kind, but life had not been easy for him. After finishing secondary school in the village, Ben could not afford to go to university. Years later, he came to the city and started a small laundry business, offering his services to homes and offices around town. He would wake up early, collect dirty clothes from his customers and spend hours washing, drying and ironing them. The work was hard, but Ben took pride in doing a good job. He was known for being reliable and always delivering clean clothes on time. Despite the difficulties, Ben had one thing that kept him going. His gear friend Ruth. They had been together since his secondary school days in the village, and her love and support meant everything to him. Every evening after a long day of work, Ben would call Ruth. Hearing her sweet voice was the best part of his day. They would talk about their dreams for the future, imagining a life where they could be together and build a happy home. One day, Ben had an idea. He asked Ruth to move to the city with him. He believed they could find better opportunities there and start building their life together. Ruth agreed, excited about the prospect of starting a new chapter with Ben. When Ruth arrived in the city, Ben was overjoyed. Finally, they were together. Although this wasn't much, it felt like heaven to Ben. Waking up to Ruth's beautiful face every morning, and falling asleep next to her every night made him feel like the luckiest man in the world. Ben and Ruth had agreed to wait until marriage before becoming intimate. This decision was important to Ruth and they were happy just being close to each other. Their love was strong and they believed it could withstand any challenge. Life seemed perfect for Ben and Ruth, but their happiness was about to be tested. One day, Ben was sitting in front of his laundry shop when he suddenly realized it was almost 4 p.m. He had promised to deliver clean clothes to one of his most important customers, Madame Monica, by 4 p.m. sharp. Ben prided himself on always being on time, and he was not about to let a customer down now. Looking at the sky, Ben saw dark clouds gathering. It was going to rain soon. He quickly grabbed the bag of clean clothes and started running towards Madame Monica's house which was about 15 minutes walk away. Halfway there, the rain started pouring heavily. Ben was completely soaked, but he did not stop. He held the bag of clean clothes tightly, making sure they stayed dry. When he finally reached Madame Monica's house, it was just two minutes past 4 p.m. Breathing heavily, Ben rang the doorbell when Madame Monica opened the door. He tried to explain why he was late. Madame, I am sorry I am a little late. The rain made it hard for me to get here on time, he said, trying to catch his breath. But Madame Monica was not listening to his words. Her eyes were fixed on Ben's body, clearly visible through his wet cloth. Madame, can you hear me? he asked, confused by her behavior. Monica snapped out of her daze. Oh, sorry, you were saying? She asked, trying to regain her composure. Ben explained again about the rain and apologized for being late. Madame Monica invited him inside, but Ben politely refused, saying he needed to get back to his shop. When he turned to leave, Monica's eyes followed him, her mind filled with thoughts she knew she should not be having. That night, Monica could not sleep. She kept thinking about Ben and what she had seen. Monica was married to one of the richest men in the country. But her husband was rarely at home. He was always traveling for business and Monica often felt lonely and neglected. The next morning, Monica visited her best friend, Lena. Like Monica, Lena was also married to a wealthy businessman. But Lena's husband lived abroad and had not been home in over two years. Lena managed all his businesses in the country. As they were talking, Lena noticed something was off about Monica. What is wrong? She asked her friend. After hesitating for a moment, Monica confessed. Lena, I saw something yesterday and I cannot stop thinking about it. It's Ben, the laundry guy. He came to deliver clothes in the rain. 
and his wet clothes i saw where you know and now i can't get him out of my mind lena was shocked monica remember you are married she scolded you can't be having these thoughts about other men but my husband is never around monica argued don't you ever feel lonely too lena sighed of course i do i have not seen my husband in two years but that does not mean we can just do whatever we want we made vows monica you need to forget about this bang guy monica nodded but as she drove home she knew she could not let it go that evening she decided to visit ben's shop when ben saw monica's expensive car pull up he rushed to greet her good evening madame you didn't have to come all the way here i could have picked up the clothes from your house he said politely monica smiled actually ben i have a special job for you it is a home service come with me i will drive you there ben always eager to please his customers quickly locked his shop and got into monica's car as they drove he realized that they were not going to monica's house the road was unfamiliar madame where are we going ben asked feeling confused and a little worried please call me monica she said softly we are going to my hotel room i have some clothes there that need cleaning is that okay ben nodded still feeling uncertain when they arrived at the hotel monica led into her room as soon as they were inside she locked the door and began to undress ben's eyes widened in shock what are you doing he stammered monica looked at him and said ben i want you i have not been able to think about anything else since that day in the rain please don't say no to me but i have a girlfriend ben protested backing away and i have a husband monica replied but he's never here and i am lonely no one has to know about this she reached out into her purse and pulled out a thick bundle of cash there's more where this came from i can take care of you ben ben stared at the money his mind racing it was more cash than he had ever seen in his life but there he thought of put waiting for him at home no he shouted running out of the room ben ran all the way home his heart pounding when he finally reached his apartment he was shocked to see ruth sitting outside their room crying all their belongings were scattered around her what happened ben asked rushing to ruth's side ruth looked at him her eyes red from crying the landlord came he threw everything out and locked the room we are three months behind on rent ben what are we going to do ben felt a wave of guilt wash over him he had been struggling to save money for the rent but his business had been slow and the extra expense of supporting Ruth, it had been impossible to keep up. Don't worry, he told Ruth, trying to sound confident. I will figure out something. Let me talk to the landlord. Ben went to his shop and got his saving bus. But when he opened it, he realized with dismay that the money inside wasn't even close to what he owned. Still, he took what he had and went to speak with the landlord. After much begging, the landlord agreed to let them stay for one more night if Ben paid what he had and promised to bring the rest the next day. But tomorrow means tomorrow, Ben. The landlord said, warning sternly, if you don't have the full amount, you are out for good. Ben and Ruth moved their belongings back into the room, but Ben could not sleep that night. He kept thinking about Monica and the money she had offered. Where else could he get enough money to pay rent and keep a roof over their heads? As the sun rose, Ben made a decision he never thought he would make. With a heavy heart, he called Monica. I knew you would change your mind, Monica said when she answered. Meet me at the hotel in an hour. Ben felt sick as he left the house, telling Ruth he had an important job to do. When he arrived at the hotel, Monica was waiting for him. What happened next was a blow for Ben. He felt ashamed and disgusted with himself. But when it was over, Monica handed him several bundles of cash. Be a good boy and I will take care of you, she said. No, madam, Ben said firmly. 
This was a one-time thing. It won't happen again. He took the money and left quickly. Ben paid off the landlord and had enough leftover to buy some things for the house. Ruth was confused and surprised by their sudden change in fortune. Where did you get all this money from? She asked. Don't worry about it, Ben snapped, feeling guilty and angry at herself. Just enjoy, okay? But Ruth could not shut the feeling off. There was something wrong. This wasn't like Ben at all. Meanwhile, Monica could not stop thinking about her encounter with Ben. That evening, she called her friend Lena to tell her all about it. Girl, you won't believe it, Monica blushed. It was amazing. He's so big and sweet. As Lena listened to her friend, a dark thought began to form in her mind. She hadn't seen her husband in years. Maybe she deserved a taste of this forbidden fruit too. The next morning, Lena drove to Ben's laundry shop. Unlike Monica, she did not bother with small talk. She handed Ben a piece of paper with an address written on it. Be at this address by 8 p.m. tonight, she said bluntly. You know what I mean. Then she got back into her car and drove off, leaving Ben standing there in shock. Ben felt frozen, wondering what kind of women this way. He had told himself that what happened with Monica was a one-time thing. He did not want to become the kind of man who sleeps with married women for money. But as he sat in his empty shop waiting for customers who rarely came, Ben started to think about his life. He had been doing laundry for years, but he had nothing to show for it. He could not even pay his rent on time. But look at all the money he got from just one night with Monica. These women wanted him and were willing to pay more than he could ever earn honestly. Maybe it was time to use what he had to get what he wanted. Maybe it was time to play along. That night, Ben went to Lena's house. Just like with Monica, he left with a large amount of cash. And so, began Ben's new life as the secret lover of the town's wealthiest women. It did not take long for Monica to find out that Lena was also sleeping with Ben. The two best friends quickly became bitter rivals, each trying to outdo the other with expensive gifts for Ben. As the weeks passed, Ruth noticed a big change in Ben. He stopped going to his laundry shop altogether. He spent most of his nights away from home and always came back with expensive clothes and gadgets that she knew he could not afford on his own. Ruth lay awake at night, worrying about what Ben had gotten himself into. This wasn't the man she knew and loved. What had happened to his principles, his belief in hard work and honesty? Then one morning, Ben came home driving a brand new car. Ruth could not believe her eyes. I don't know what you have gotten yourself into, she said, but I know it is nothing good. When it all blows up in your face, and it will, I won't be here to see it. She started packing her things, tears streaming down her face. Ben just watched her, his expression cold. Go then, he shouted. Instead of being happy and enjoying our new life, you want to leave? Fine, go. Ruth looked at Ben one last time, her voice breaking. What happened to your principles? She asked, what happened to dignity in labor? I don't recognize you anymore, Ben. And with that, she walked out of the door. Ruth went to stay with her friend Mary for a few days while she figured out what to do next. She was thinking about going back to her village when she met Mary's brother, Eric. Eric was a teacher who earned a modest and honest living. He was kind and thoughtful. He listened patiently as Ruth poured out her heart about her troubles with Ben. Before long, Ruth found herself falling for Eric. Two months after leaving Ben, Eric asked Ruth to marry him. Ruth saw in Eric the qualities she had once loved in Ben. Happily accepted. They set a date for their wedding, and Ruth felt like she was finally getting her life back on track. Meanwhile, Ben was still caught up in his affairs with Monica and Lena, enjoying the wealth and luxury they showered on him. He barely thought about Ruth anymore, too caught up in his new lifestyle. But Ben's luck was about to run out.
One evening, as he was taking a walk in his neighborhood, a black SUV suddenly pulled up beside him. Before he could react, two large men jumped out, grabbed him and shoved him into the back of the car. Terrified, Ben was driven to an abandoned building on the outskirts of town. There he was brought face to face with an angry looking middle-aged man. So you are the one sleeping with my wife? The man thundered. It was Otumba, Lena's husband. In her jealousy, Monica had sent evidence of Lena's affair with Ben to Otumba, who had flown back to the country to deal with the situation personally. Your, your wife? Realizing with horror the trouble he was in, Otumba nodded to his maid, who began beating Ben mercilessly. Please, I am sorry, Ben cried out. I will never go near your wife or anyone else's wife again. Please don't kill me. When they were finished, Otumba's maid threw Ben back into the car and dumped him on the street near his own. Bruised and bleeding, Ben staggered back to his feet. But when he got home, he found it empty. Otumba's maid had taken everything, the car, all the expensive gifts, even his clothes. Ben was left with nothing as he sat on the floor of his empty room. Ben thought about how far he had fallen. He had lost everything, his business, his possessions, and worst of all, his self-respect. Then he thought about Ruth, sweet honest Ruth, who had loved him when he had nothing. I have to find her, he said to himself. The next morning, ignoring his aching body, Ben set out to look for Ruth. One of his neighbors, Auntie Jane, offered to take him to where Ruth was living now. When they arrived at the address, Ben knocked on the door. To his surprise, a man's voice answered, Are you sure this is the right place? But the biggest shock was yet to come. When the door opened, Ben found himself face to face with a tall, handsome man. I am looking for Ruth, Ben said. The man smiled. Oh, that must be my wife, he replied. Darling, someone is here to see you. Ben felt like the ground was spinning under his feet. Ruth was married. How long had he been caught up in his own selfish world? Who is it? Ruth's familiar voice called out. A moment later, she appeared at the doorway. Ben's jaw dropped. Ruth was heavily pregnant, her belly round and full. Ben opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He just stood there, tears rolling down his cheeks, as he realized the full extent of what he had lost. Ruth looked at Ben with a mist of pity and sadness. Ben, what are you doing here? She asked. Ben struggled to find his voice. Ruth, I, I am so sorry. For everything, I made so many mistakes. I lost my way. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, Ben, she sighed. I forgave you a long time ago, but that does not change anything. I have moved on with my life. I am happy now, truly happy. I hope someday you can find that happiness too. Eric, sensing the tension, put his arm around Ruth. I think you should go now, he said to Ben. Ben nodded. He turned away, each step feeling heavier than the last. As he reached the street, he looked back one last time. Through the window, he could see Ruth and Eric embracing, their face full of love and joy. In that moment, Ben understood the true cost of his actions. He had not only lost his dignity and self-respect, but he had also lost the love of his life. A good woman who stood by him, through hard times and believed in him when no one else did. This is a cautionary tale, self to remind us that actions have consequences and poor choices can lead to losing the things that truly matter in life. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in my next story. Bye.